Hey, I'm Jay. This video is going to be making a werewolf in ZBrush. This is kind of another Halloween themed video. Last year I made Bernie Wrightson's Frankenstein and I thought the wolf man was only fitting to kind of keep the tradition going. So we're going to be using just ZBrush and Photoshop to try to make something scary. We're going to start out with a sphere at a pretty low dynamesh setting so I can get going. Um, I've got a kind of sheet of reference on my other monitor and I know that I want to do a wolf like a werewolf uh, and he's kind of mixed with a man uh, you'll kind of see as this goes along but in in terms of like design and sculpture there seem to be two uh, extreme ways you could go where the original wolfman uh, from the black and white horror movie is very much a man with kind of a doggish nose and fur everywhere and then in those like underworld type of movies you get werewolves or lichens in that case that are extreme extremely uh animal wolf-like and you know very little human elements to them so this is going to be kind of an in-between-ish and uh one of the references that i really really liked was uh from the wolfman movie where benicio del toro plays a wolf uh, i haven't seen that movie i think i heard it wasn't that good but um damn i really loved the way that he looks though so that's awesome um, the other reason that lets me, the other thing that lets me do this is ZBrush's fiber mesh, which is kind of new to me. I mean, I don't, I don't use it, uh, all the time, but you know, I've been getting a little bit more comfortable with it. Uh, when I want to employ, you know, last year I did Frankenstein. I've done a couple more fiber mesh projects since then. Um, that personal piece I did of the female archer character has pretty long hair. Uh, and so anyways, I've gotten a little bit more used to it and I did a test before this actually and That kind of gave me some confidence in Being able to do this because this you know adding the f adding the fur comes at the end and It really relies on it. So uh, Here I'm actually um, Carving out the inside of the mouth. Um, I want to touch on what I'm doing right here So what I'm doing right here is I'm, I'm in uh, Dynamesh, right and I want to generate a base mesh to sculpt and like put details on and stuff. So a little trick uh, I do that you'll see me do right here is I kind of exaggerate the forms so that Z remesher makes loops in a more predictable way. So, you know, it looks a little bit derpy, but um, I'm doing it so that it generates loops around the eyes and the mouth in a nice smooth way. Another trick too is after you Z remesh once, you might get some wonky uh, geometry. Try Z remeshing again because on this new simpler form it'll be even cleaner uh, so give that a go before you undo but anyways I use that technique to make this base mesh uh, instead of like in the old days we'd have to model this so it's really cool to get you up in sculpting really quick so that first stage in Dynamesh was really to generate uh, a shape that would make a nice base mesh to sculpt um, so I'm not gonna be doing any big dramatic things anymore but I'm gonna be moving things around and refining and stuff like that uh, this teeth I just imported from last year's Frankenstein model actually um, You know on the stream I said it's worth it to just uh, do this one time because anytime I need teeth uh, I'll just go grab it. So that's exactly what happened right here I just brought in some teeth and there's it's already got all these little poly groups on it um, So I can I can use that to select them and move them around um, My original idea for this was I was gonna do a werewolf transforming like maybe mid transformation I still I wasn't sure how gory I wanted to do how much like pain I wanted to do because I still wanted it to be kind of a fun Halloween thing you know I didn't want it to be uh, gross or anything so uh, that's why this mouth is open from the beginning is I knew there was gonna be I was gonna do something intense with them I wanted to show those teeth I wanted to show kind of pain and stuff and you saw that it ends up with being kind of a like a bloodthirsty maybe howl or scream um yeah so the mouth's open the whole time there's kind of a grimace so i know that it's going to be intense uh i just don't exactly know the other actual you know kind of concern i had with doing a transformation or a howl is uh in my gut i kind of wanted to have him like looking up at the sky doing that and that just didn't seem to make like a good picture so you see at the end i kind of just made him screaming at us uh or off camera um so yeah so here i'm probably going to be uh doing some eyes so i like to get eyes in pretty quickly um 
you know, I'm, I'm nowhere near done with the sculpting part, but putting the eyes in gives me a sense of, you know, are the eyes too far apart? Um, how does it balance with the face? Uh, what are the, what are the eyes going to look like? You know, I kind of need to uh, cross that bridge at some point. So here I just kind of painted in kind of like contact lenses. Some of my references kind of like a wolf, but like a contact lens. Um, but this lets me like kind of refine the structure around the face. And as humans, we just pick up, we just pick up on faces with eyes so much better. Like once you put pupils in there and irises, you're like, Oh, like he looks cross-eyed or he looks uh, weird or smart or dumb or whatever. So I like to get that on pretty quick. And uh, with the poly paint, I just made some colored circles. Uh, and then, uh, the material that you just flood on there, the Mac cap is toy plastic. Um, that's pretty standard. And I did put a little bubble on where the eye is you know, so that the highlight looks a little nice. Uh, so I'm still bouncing around here. Uh, I know that I, I think asymmetry is going to help this guy. Uh, that is, you know, turning mirror off. And I also know that I'm going to put some kind of general noisy detail on him. So that's always kind of something when I'm, when I'm getting towards the end of refining secondary shapes, that's something I'm thinking about. Uh, when am I going to go off? symmetry uh when am i going to detail it so usually uh, maybe i'll go up in subdivisions add some noisy detail and then uh start tweaking it um asymmetrically with the move brush and stuff like that um because you know that's really going to help them make make them look organic like and i want this guy to be like feral looking like i want him to be uh scary and like animalistic uh that's where this that line down the middle of the nose comes from. I had some, I had a couple of grimacing wolves that I looked at and their face muscles are nowhere near similar. Uh, they have that long snout and with the fur, you can't really see their muscles. So kind of emulating some shadows. Uh, the wolves have a couple more wrinkles on their, on their nose, the upper nose, which would be their snout because it's so much longer, but this you'll see me working on this area. Now this like, kind of sneering area, the muscles above the nostril, beneath the brow, that squeezing. Um, that's going to be pretty important to me. I also know that that's not going to be covered in fur. I'm not exactly sure what the fur pattern is going to be right now. I did, I was thinking like some Wolverine sideburny jaw stuff, you know, those wispy uh, hairs that come off the jaw and make a cool shape. But like kind of what I was speaking about earlier that I knew that the second part of this is fiber mesh. And so there's going to be kind of a merging of those two. Like I have to kind of do the first part of the, of the character right now. And then this, the first is going to be just as important, if not more important second act here. So, um, looks like I, looks like I'm a little bit asymmetrical now. Oh, maybe not. Well, maybe I'm jumping back and forth, but here I'm putting in those tendons on the neck, try to emphasize that he's straining here to, to, uh, yell out, making the teeth smaller hoping to make him look bigger by doing that. Um, kind of tweaking the proportions, uh, always doing this till it feels right. And good to like give yourself a, you know, a little bit of a breather, go get a glass of water or something. Um, or just come back the next day if you have the luxury. And again, t turning off symmetry is going to really help with that. There's like, something's going to feel weird. So it's hard. You got to judge these things like individually. Like how are the eyes feeling? Are they too small? Are they too big? Um, I think you'll even see, end up seeing me change the eyes one more time uh, in a big way because still not happy with it. Happy with the general screamy shape. I uh, feel like it's kind of too smooth still though. There we go. Adding those big neck muscles. Something I kind of like notice I struggle with a bit is... Uh, Maybe I'm holding back too much all over. And so, you know, I, I like to try to force myself to pick a couple of key places and kind of go overboard or at least like, you know, go too far and then rein it back to just emphasize some stuff. Putting some veins here. Here I am starting to make it asymmetrical. Emphasizing those uh, scrunchy wrinkles on the eye. And here I'm, I'm doing some of this detail now without mirroring it. So hoping to... Uh, emphasize some sort of a unbalanced strain uh, damn standards always the brush I use everyone uses uh, it's such a cool brush 
to do these kind of wrinkles and tension squeezing stuff you know um all right now i'm gonna mask mask the hair this is so i could i thought you know i could always finish sculpting details after the fur like it's gonna be a big part let's see it so you hear me you saw me uh i masked the uh wolverine chops so the way i uh i've been doing hair now that i think is the best way to work with it is i started a very l short length as you saw so i masked it i tried to get that number right that number like is going to vary depending on how large your mask is but that's going to be the difference between tight fur and like human hair like the the follicles per square inch if that makes sense thinking of it that way the more and the less greatly affect what type of fur it looks like uh so yeah so then it's all very short then i pull it out with the move brush uh so you see me i actually varied the lengths myself um then i'm starting to i got those couple clumps there with the the spike groom spike brush all these brushes i'm using are, are groom brushes other than the move brush uh, and I'm just trying to get some spiky clumps together, make it look a little more natural. I also am, I, I'm using this uh, turbulence brush, and I kind of lowered the, the strength there, and uh, that gives it, that makes it not so straight. You use the turbulence brush, starts to like crinkle it, and uh, makes it look more natural. Uh, and I knew I was gonna do the eyebrow separate here. I thought this is kind of an important werewolfy part. These big. Uh, <laughs> big hairy wispy eyebrows and so I'm just going over things you kind of see me now doing the turbulence there you go it makes it a little more unkept looking and uh, also because of fiber mesh and the way that ZBrush renders it and also I thought it'd be more fun for a lot of you guys to see me doing the render in ZBrush so no key shot no Maya anything like that so it's 100% ZBrush and Photoshop and um, I thought they'd be cool on its own, but also it, you know, it's a good case for fiber mesh because ZBrush render, renders fiber mesh in a in a cool way. Uh, if I were to convert it to geometry and pull it into Keyshot, you know, we could get a pretty cool result, but it it's definitely handled handled differently. <clears throat> kind of like makes it a little wispy and more hair like. Anyway, tries to do that. So yeah, here we go, laying down some general uh, skin like stuff. These are just the brushes that come with ZBrushes. Doing the um, spray with the lines in a crisscrossy pattern, just so things aren't smooth, and trying to pay attention to the direction that the skin would be folding. Um, probably store a morph target before you do this, so you can brush out anything that you don't particularly like. Uh, and you know, I can I can go really harsh, and then with the smooth brush, just tap it a bit, and. Uh, this can be a fun part. I mean, you know, it makes it feel like more alive. All right, so here we go. See, so now I, I never really could like the eyes and I knew, you know, a big solid color would feel cool. And I just went, I'm just gonna go 100% yellow eyes. <clears throat> now starting to lay down the poly paint color on him himself because the values here, the, the fact that he's gonna be a dark value and a light value, again, uh, is a part of the design. So, uh, after laying this in like right now we're at the point where for the first time the character has all of the elements that he that make up his design the the value of the teeth the eyes the value of the color in his skin the darkness of his nose as you can see like while I was sculpting him I even masked the nose just to see what it looks like with the dark nose because it's a um, the fact that that's a dark value adds to the whole shape of everything so but now that we got everything there we can start seeing the character as a whole for the first time so now in transpose master posing everything uh trying to get it again off the symmetrical line um brought it back and adding one final layer of fiber mesh that are with some crazy hairs to make it look like just loose flying hairs make them look a little bit more uh feral uh and there's a crash Good thing I just saved it right before. So now making the document very big, very large, changing the draw so that the camera lens doesn't look crazy. Uh, up the value resolu uh, shadow resolution. Now I'm going to be rendering uh, passes here. I'm going to be rendering. Uh, I got the ambient occlusion, and then you can turn that off once you do that one time because it takes a while. 
in the depth and the shadow, and then start moving the light around and rendering that. So rendering the light from above, below, left, right, behind, and getting as many of those as I feel like I might want. And then I'll be doing one more render with the skin shade, skin shader on there. It's got a little subsurface. There it is. Uh, and then the reflective material. And then in Photoshop, opening all those up. Uh, and then I'm going to start blending them. All those light positions, I'm going to start mixing them either with screen mode or actual uh, just normal mode and opacity. And so the screen mode really helps with especially these rim lights where you want like a harsh difference. Like, you, you know, I, I definitely knew I wanted a blue rim light from behind. Uh, I knew the moon would be somehow involved, you know, being werewolfy. Uh, and then you can add masks on these layers and paint things out. Uh, that's what I did with the reflection or the specularity. You know, I I laid it on there and then just painted it, especially on the nose and the eyes, things like that. Uh, overlaying some generic photos I have of grungy textures here so that, again, it's not so smooth. Just add some tooth to it. And also, you know, kind of helps feel like he's dirty or he's been in the dirt. Uh Reinforcing these eye highlights here by painting some in here to exaggerate it, to bring attention to the eyes, to bring a wetness to the eye. Uh, the way I paint it too is a little irregular, as if you know there's some water liquid on there or some stuff. And then I had this idea of these spots on the light parts, you know, like just I don't know, an irregular kind of spottiness, and uh, just use that grungy texture there and adds more tooth to it again too. And then, yes, here's the final guy. So um, I came back and I put a uh, – I, I painted in a background there with the moon. I got a moon from a NASA image, and I uh, I knew I was going to blur the crap out of it, so I just put together some uh, trees and stuff. And then once you lens blur it, it kind of uh, fades out anyway. I used the depth pass to – as a layer, uh, as an alpha that drove – the lens effect so i get kind of a realistic focus there that you would get on a camera and uh then i hand painted some blood at the end and popped out the eyes i thought the blood it needed something and i really liked the idea of making it a little bit more a little bit more gory and made it look like he just maybe uh ate somebody and he's like pretty stoked about it so anyways that's uh that's this video i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you have a fun safe halloween and i'll catch you guys next time